What is going on guys, D1 here, and today I bring you my Unreal Engine 4 2D game tutorial series. Uh, in this series, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a character move left and right, jump, we're going to set up animations for it, and maybe even get into wall jumping. Uh, so obviously to do that, we need a character, and I created this potato here in Blender, and he's going to have some basic animations that we can work with, an idle animation for when he's standing, a falling, jumping, walking and running animation. Walk and run obviously for the different speeds uh, that he's going to be using. So I created this guy. You can use him however you like. And that's the guy we're going to be using in Unreal Engine 4. So let's go ahead and set up our project. This video will be just kind of the setup where we create the project and import the character, set up his uh, basic components uh, so we can get to the blueprints. So I'm going to call this tutorial project. You can see the settings down here. I like to start with no starter content. That way my asset uh, asset browser isn't you know filled with Unreal assets that I'm not going to be using. So we're going to go ahead and create that and just wait for it to load. All right. Okay, so because we didn't add, load any assets, you don't see the usual chairs and table setup that they have. That's fine. So now in the content browser, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it player. And I'm going to go into that and create another folder called player assets. So over here in the player folder is going to be the blueprints for the player, the blueprint and the animation blueprint. And in player assets, it's just going to be the mesh, the texture, the material, animations, and all the other messy things that we don't want to see regularly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and import him. The download will be in the description. Uh, so you should be getting the FBX for this character, possibly the textures and the blend. I should include those. Okay, so potato FBX. Make sure you import mesh, import as skeletal, import animations, check that, import materials, and import textures. Import. We get a bunch of warnings, no problem. Now, I'm just going to drag him into the scene so we can take a closer look. And you can see there are two things that bother me here. First of all, there's this spec here. You can see it's, he's really shiny in a very unattractive way. The other thing is because his hair and his feet are planes, you can only see one side. The other side is pretty much invisible. So we're going to fix both these things right now in the material. So you can see over here, this is called material. I'm going to click that. Let's drag the texture down. And I'm just going to size this up and zoom in so you guys can see everything. So here's the texture, here's the material box, which controls pretty much everything. So the first thing we're going to do is create a constant I'm just going to type in const and check the first one constant. This is a constant value. It's set to zero by default, and we're going to plug that into specular. This way, the character specularity would be zero. So that's fixed. And then I'm going to select the material box over here. And I'll look over to the details panel and just go down and check two-sided. And once I do that, all faces will be rendered on both sides. So those pl planes we had, which were transparent on one side, they'd work just fine. Just gonna wait for it to finish compiling. Okay, so now when we look at the character, he's no longer shiny, and we can see his feet. They're not invisible anymore. And his hair. Okay, so now that that's working, let's create the blueprint. So we're going to go up to the player folder. Of course, make sure you save always. I'm going to call this main scene. And that's just the level. So in the player folder, which I created, I'm going to make a blueprint. Now we get a list of blueprints. You can see actor pawn. What we want is character. So you can see the description here, a character is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. 
So we'll call this player BP for player blueprint. And I'm going to click that. So here's the graph where we set up our blueprints. This is where our logic goes. If you used Blender before, uh, minor interruption. If you've used Blender before, then this would be where your logic bricks go. The component here is where we load the character's mesh and we set up his animations, movement properties, all kinds of fun things over here. So this is the basic capsule, which represents our, uh, our character. And it's going to be the thing that moves him as well. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit so you guys can see. Uh, we're going to go down here and select the mesh. And I'm going to scroll down to the mesh section. And make sure that the skeletal mesh we select is our potato. Okay, a little bit large. I'm going to press W, and that way I get the arrows. Now, if you're pressing, you can press W, E, and R. So W is for movement, E is for rotation, and R is for scale. If you if you press those hotkeys and it's not changing, try pressing the 3D view. You just want to select it to make sure that you're uh, typing it in there. Okay, so I'm going to drag him down. I'm also going to scale him down. I think that works. Drag him up a little bit so he's in the, somewhere around the center. And then press E to rotate. 90 degrees. You can see at the bottom there, it shows me how many degrees I'm rotating him at. Okay, I think that works. Now he's got a blue nose. That's fine. We're going to select the capsule and scale it down. So you can see here, if you go down to shape, we can see capsule half height. And I'm going to just drag that down until it fits our character. And I'm going to scale him up a little bit. No. Nope. Okay, I guess he's fine. Okay, so now that he's in his little prison, uh, I'm going to select the mesh again and go down to collision, make sure that he's set to no collision. So the only thing that's going to be colliding now, if I select the capsule, you can see the collision is set to pawn. The only thing colliding should be this capsule here. So it's going to ignore his little ponytail and his eyebrows when he's touching other objects. Okay, so I'm going to compile and save. And this should be it for just placing our character's mesh. Later on, we're going to be adding animations, but we're going to save that for the animation tutorial. Okay, so now we should be ready to start... Oh, one more thing before I go. You notice here, if I go and play, although we created the character blueprint, it's not loading into the scene. So the last thing we're going to do is just set that up so it loads our player before anything. Uh, now, to make sure we see it properly, we just want to set up a camera. So, add component scroll down to camera we're gonna add a spring arm and we're also gonna add a camera now you wanna grab the camera over here in the components list grab the camera drag it onto the spring arm that way the parent will become the spring arm so now you notice when I rotate let me just click over there rotate the camera rotates with it and we're gonna go 180 degrees drag the camera back pull it up a little bit and while having the camera selected, I'm going to go down to camera settings and choose orthographic. And I'll set this to 2048. I think that should be a good number. Uh, one more thing. I'm going to select the spring arm and I'm going to uncheck inherit pitch yaw roll. So that way, while our character is moving, he's going to be facing the direction he's moving in. We don't want the camera to be rotating with that. That's going to mess with our perspective, right? So we just want to uncheck these so that the camera keeps its current rotation. It's always looking at the character, but not rotating with it. All right, so now that we have our camera set up, we can make the character spawn in the level instead of this default flying camera thing. I'm going to press Escape. Okay, so to do that, we're going to need a, a different kind of blueprint. So I'm going to right-click Blueprint Game Mode. And I'm going to call this Default Game Mode. Okay, so we're going to open this blueprint. And when we're going to ignore the graph. We're going to ignore the components. We're just going to check the default values. 
And under game mode, the first thing you see is default, default pawn class. We're going to change that to player BP. That's the blueprint that we created for our character. So this way, instead of loading the flying camera thing, it's going to load our character as the player. And it's going to use the character's camera, which we just set up. So now when I press play, wait a second, nothing happens. That's because we created the game mode, but we didn't tell Unreal Engine to use it for this scene. So we're going to go to settings over here, click world settings, scroll down to game mode, and right now it's set to none. You want to set it to the name of the game mode you just created. So in my case, default game mode. And now when I play, we see our character. Very dark, no problem. Just going to go over here, scale the level a little bit so it looks more like a 2D level. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to drag a skylight in here so we don't have really dark shadows. And I'm going to tweak its values a little bit. We're going to close world settings because it's not letting us see our details here. I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit. And I'm going to give it a slight red tint, because I like that. Come on. Somewhere over here should be fine. Okay. And I'm going to reset the rotation, set everything to zero. So our sunlight is facing this way now. And I'm going to rotate it. You can see the arrow there. And I just want to make sure that it's facing the character. So now when I press play, you can see it's facing the character. Everything is insanely bright because of the uh, auto-adjust that Unreal Engine has. So to fix that, I'm going to go and go into Visuals, Post Process Volume. Drag that in, scale it up so Oops, scale it up. You want to make sure this is covering the scene and every area that your camera is going to go into, just so it affects everything. And I'm going to go into it. And in the details panel here, I'm going to scroll down to auto exposure. That's our problem. And I'm going to set it to, let's say, 1. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. That seems to look fine. The camera is a bit zoomed out, so I'm going to go back and open the player BP. Go into components, select the camera, go back to ortho width, and set it to 1024. Compile, save. Okay, that's decent. Now that we have our character mesh set up and our character actually loads into the game, we can actually start with the movement.